Leah, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. It's exciting to have this conversation because Startup Health just announced yesterday the launch of an Alzheimer's Health Moonshot, and you're a critical piece of this project. So I wanted to sit down with you and hear more about your thoughts uh, about that news. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because um Alzheimer's runs in my family. So both I lost both of my grandmothers to the disease before the age of 20. And that was what made me decide to be a neuropsychologist and, and focus on this disease as my life's work. About seven and a half million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease today, which is a startling number. That's expected to grow to more than 14 million over the next 20 years. So this is a disease that's on an accelerated path um, in our society, both in the United States and globally. We have a super aging society, and so as we look to the future, this is just becoming, you know, more, it's becoming more and more critical that we, we tackle this disease. So obviously this health moonshot is a call for innovation, and I wonder what you think of as the, maybe the broad categories where we need to start to focus. Where are there opportunities in your mind to apply innovation to Alzheimer's? You know, I think the sad thing about Alzheimer's is everywhere. You know, unlike HIV where we've made tremendous strides since the 1980s or depression and either other health uh, mental health issues where we have new therapeutics and new diagnostics and new biological understandings of the disease, our models for Alzheimer's haven't advanced that much since the mid-80s. So we need better diagnostics. We still don't do a good job of differentiating Alzheimer's dementia from other kinds of dementia like Lewy body, frontal lobe, vascular. We often misdiagnose these dementias. They're and so we need really good diagnostics to understand how to better diagnose this from a biological perspective rather than a symptom perspective. I think the other category is obviously therapeutics. We know that there aren't really any good drugs available on the market today. And part of that has been a focus on late stage Alzheimer's in our prior research. And so you're seeing for me, what's exciting are some of the new emerging biotechs, and we're looking at some of those early stage biotechs right now for investment opportunities that are tackling the disease in its earlier stages. So think like a statin for the brain, right? Like a preventative drug that you start taking in midlife to help you uh, mitigate the risk factors you might have for developing Alzheimer's disease later in your life. So preventing the disease rather than trying to cure it after the fact. I think another broad area is human suffering. So patient impact, caregiver support, what can we do today before we have a timeline to advance diagnostics and therapeutics to help people live higher quality lives with more information and more resources to manage the disease as it is today. You know, one thing that strikes me, uh, has always struck me about Alzheimer's uh, are, are the sort of adjacent um, factors that really play into it and I think about you know, what do you think about the innovations around, let's say, loneliness, uh, mm -hmm. around, um, you know, speech, communication, all these different areas that sort of contribute to brain health yeah. that then feed towards Alzheimer's, where there's opportunity for innovation as well? You, you can't separate these things, right? When we look at the risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, we see that the risk factors for Alzheimer's disease mirror those for cardiovascular disease you know, exercising, smoking, right. a healthy diet, good sleep, resting your brain. Getting diabetes triples your risk of having Alzheimer's exactly. disease, right? So when we look, when I look at Alzheimer's disease and brain health, I, I, I always say there is, there is no mental health or health, there's just health. This is all really one thing with a set of a risk factors, genetic, lifestyle, and other that drive overall health. And the more that we see the interconnectedness of brain health, cardiovascular health, even you know diabetes, what we what we see is a picture emerging where, you know, the the latest data say that between one and two of three cases of Alzheimer's are preventable. Really? Yeah, that's stunning news, but it's also putting the burden back on, on us as individuals to have that data and have that information and then act on it. So for Pre instance, Preventable yeah. how? Maybe Pre you're gonna get there. Preventable through lifestyle modification. So one of the number one risk factors for developing Alzheimer's is a sedentary lifestyle. And you know, people tease me, I'm, I'm a lap swimmer. I swim 2,800 yards, five days a week, and everybody says it's for my waistline. It's not. I'm maple we 4 positive. It's for my brain, right? I, my grandmothers both died with the disease. I don't want this disease. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking at the data and going, okay, this is what I'm gonna do to slow down this time bomb in my brain. 
what's fascinating to me is when I'm sitting at the pool, you know, say here at the hotel and talking to somebody else is they have Alzheimer's in their family. They don't know that. They don't know that exercise would reduce their risk. And, you know, that kind of information I think is vital to get out to people. And so I think also one of the areas that's really missing that we need to focus in Alzheimer's is an aggregation of information and resources so that people aren't just going on the internet and finding information in 20 different spots. There's one source of information. Yeah. I'd like to see us do a little bit of that at Startup Health for this disease too with the moonshot. You know, it, it makes me think about the ecosystem of innovators. You know, when you talk about you know nutrition and, mm -hmm. and exercise and yes. all these things that feed into yes. it, I think about a lot of startups that might not even know that they're part of the picture for Alzheimer's, um, and they think, oh, we're just dealing with you know food as medicine. They don't realize that that's also part. Yeah. Um, what would be a message that you would have for them? Like, how, how would you want them to play into this health moonshot and? just think more holistically about brain health and Alzheimer's as part of their uh, individual mission? You know, brain the brain is the motherboard of the body. It controls everything. It's where we store our memories, our identity. It's where language function resides, where emotion resides, where memory resides. This is, this is you know, more our heart than our heart, right? So to speak, as, as we understand the importance of the brain and to who we are as human beings. And so the health of our brain is vital. And so when I talk to health innovators that are doing meditation or general wellness or nutrition, you're right, I get excited because I think, you know, if we can reach more consumers in more parts of the world directly and help them just live healthier lives, we are going to take a, a punch at this disease just with that when you look at the lifestyle factors, right? So there are things that we're doing across the broader portfolio at Startup Health that are going to have implications for this disease. So I think it's important to remember that and to, to encourage people to talk about those things. And it's also important to have the targeted work that we're talking about with the moonshot. So I think they need to, these are parallel tracks. They need to live side by side. Now you've said that the health moonshot for Alzheimer's is a call for innovation for companies, but yes. obviously it's also a call for partnerships and investors. So yes. what's your message to, to those folks? I think for many people, they want to give, um, they want to put their money to work on issues that they really care about. I mean, I know I've, I've talked to some family offices where, you know, it might be type one diabetes for the family. In some other cases, it's Alzheimer's. You know, we, we are definitely looking for partners that want to work with us to identify the most promising companies in the different areas where we're trying to tackle the disease, diagnostics, therapeutics, patient and caregiver support, and accelerate innovation. We can move so much faster than we're moving. And, and I'm reminded of that African proverb, if you want to go far, I mean, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's why I think what you were talking about earlier with the entrepreneurs who are working in nutrition and health and wellness is important because it's actually by combining our data sets, by combining our resources, by combining our knowledge, by supporting CEOs of startup companies to learn from one another so that they can get better faster and grow their companies faster, get to market faster, get through clinical trials faster. That's how we solve these problems. Yeah. Malia, thank you so much for taking the time with me. Thank you for your passion for this area and for spearheading this uh, health moonshot about Alzheimer's. I'm excited to see what comes next. I am too. Thanks so much, Logan. All right. Have a great day. You too.